Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Department of State Services releases convener of hashtag revolution now protest on Moyele Shawari after 124 days in custody following orders from Federal High Court. Federal High Court finds former Abia State Governor and serving Senator Oji Uzokalu guilty of 7.65 billion Naira fraud, sentencing him to 12 years in prison. Pipeline explosion kills one in the Barua area of Alimosho in Lagos State after activities of vandals engaged in illegal oil bunkering ignite a blaze. And Speaker Nancy Pelosi confirms U.S. House of Representatives will file impeachment charges against President Donald Trump for alleged abuse of power. For more information on our top stories, just check out our website. It's channelstv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channels web has videos of all our shows. The four-month free train services from Lagos to Ibadan announced by the federal government is gaining audience with over 30 passengers latching onto the opportunity. The test run service, which commenced on December the 2nd, is running a two-leg per day, taking off from Ibadan at 9 a.m. and returning at 4 p.m. for Iju train station in Lagos. Our correspondent, Loretta Chogo, took a ride on the train and has this report. I arrive at Iju train station building, an old structure said to have been built over 60 years ago. It has been a terminating and originating terminal for commuters going to Agege, Agbadu, Kajola, Papalantu, Yaba, Ikeja, Long and Ibutemeta. Boarding the executive train coach with the state-of-the-art facilities is a new experience for passengers. The executive train coach with the state-of-the-art facilities departs at 4 p.m. from Lagos. Two hours into the journey, the train stops at Bakmalanto in Ogun State and takes another one hour to take in water for the washroom. We are told that expected time of arrival in Ibadan is another one hour from Papalantu. And this is the same travel time from Ibadan to Lagos. So in calculation, the travel time is four hours with the stopover and without the stopover, it is three hours. 31 passengers are recorded on the 48-seater double coach to Ibadan. They're excited. Because I don't believe Nigeria can improve like this. So the day I saw the news that ah, there will be free um, train ride from Lagos to Ibadan, I was like, ah, eh, my country. So when I reached here, in fact, so beautiful, cool ride, as in cool movement. There is no gallop or any other thing. And wherever I'm going to Ibadan, I may face maybe traffic, congestion and others, but it's very safe and cool. Fortunately, my father worked with the Shako railway line those days. Then he used to tell us how they used to, you know, they would be hard in the coal. But this, we can see we are transcending at a very high speed. So I thank God for that. And I thank the president for the guest job. If we put the right attitude, I wish God will help us to reorientate ourselves in this nation. There are bits of using things the right way, seeing it as our own, not that it's government's property. We arrive in Badon at 8 p.m., four hours after takeoff from Lagos. 
The managing director of the Nigerian Railway Corporation says travel time will drastically reduce after the test run. But what we are doing now is normal for people to feel uh, the track and we interact with them and we hear what they say and also to build up going to the commercial stage. So because you have to do proper timing and uh, uh, positioning of the uh, rolling stock before coming out on a commercial basis. A large turnout of passengers is emphasized during the festive season. Perhaps the railway authorities may consider adding more trains on the tracks before full commercial services begin in 2020. Loretta Chiogo, Channels Television News. And let's cross over to Abuja Studios where Ibrahim Adra is standing by with more stories. Hello, Ibrahim. Hello, Melinda. Here in the nation's capital, the National Assembly has passed the 2020 budget of 10.6 trillion naira, showing an increase of over 260 billion naira from the initial budget of 10.3 trillion naira, presented by President Muhammad Buhari. Federal lawmakers also increased the benchmark of crude oil from $55 to $57 and retained the exchange rate at 305 naira to a dollar as part of parameters for funding the budget. Our correspondent Terry Kumi has that report. 58 days after President Muhammad Buhari submitted the 2020 budget proposal to a joint session of the National Assembly, and having concluded the defense process, it is considered by both chambers. In the Senate, the chairman of the Committee on Appropriations gives the parameters and assumptions on which the budget is predicated. In preparing the details of this bill, the committee adopted the 2020 to 2020 billion term expenditure framework and uh, framework and fiscal strategy paper as approved by the National Assembly. VMTF proposes 2.18 million barrels per day as the daily production output for crude in 2020. $57 per barrel as crude oil benchmark price, GDP growth of 2.93% and an exchange rate of 305 Naira to a dollar. President Buhari's budget proposal was 10.3 trillion Naira, but the Senate committee presents a budget of 10.6 trillion Naira, showing an increase of over 260 billion Naira. The increase allows for interventions in critical areas such as national security, road infrastructure, mines and state development, health, social needs, water and water, among others. The lawmakers, however, agree that their job does not end with the passage of the budget. The issue of oversight should be non-negotiable uh, to ensure that at least this budget meets the purpose for which it's meant. Let us pass this baby and the clean water basin to the executive. So if the child will survive, if it will not survive, our hands are off. We are the baby nurse. We have done our delivery. Katsina and Bono, 1.5. The same figures are presented and adopted in the House of Representatives. The National Assembly increased the statutory transfers from 556.7 billion naira to 560 billion naira. There is a slight reduction in recurrent expenditure from 4.88 trillion naira to 4.84 trillion naira. 2.46 trillion naira for capital projects remained unchanged. The 2.4 trillion naira proposed by President Buhari for debt servicing was, however, increased to 2.7 trillion naira. With the insistence of the National Assembly on bigger allocations to capital projects, the Ministry of Works gets the highest capital allocation of 315.6 billion naira against 262 billion naira presented by President Buhari. Education, 84.7 billion against 48 billion presented by the President. And health, 59.9 billion against the President's 46 billion naira proposal. The National Assembly also increased its budget from 125 billion naira to 128 billion naira. This is the earliest in not so recent years that the budget has been passed by the National Assembly. In passing the budget, the lawmakers are optimistic that the country will now return to a January to December budget cycle. But one issue that has characterized the country's budget has been the releases. So the question now is how much of the capital budget will be released to the MDAs?
and when. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mr. Babatunde Fowler, has identified research and data collection as key to raising the bar in revenue generation in Nigeria and Africa. Speaking at the meeting with tax experts in Abuja, Mr. Fowler calls on tax authorities in the continent to beam their searchlight on how to increase tax collection from operators of digital platforms. <laughs> Tax experts from Nigeria and five other African countries under the aegis of the African Tax Research Network at a forum to rob minds on how to improve tax administration on the continent. With the theme of the meeting focusing on revenue challenges and bridging the digital divide in an analog economy, participants are reminded of their role in changing the narrative in the continent where tax collection is low. We require information to understand our respective understand the respective taxpayers and also define strategies to ensure that we can maximize the potential of tax revenue in Africa. Talking about the digital economy, the economic activities associated with this business like Uber, Amazon and our own Jumea is a further confirmation of this theme. To put it in clear terms, the digital space is the new gold in terms of revenue generation and tax administration must be alive to this fact. Former chairman of the FIRS, Mrs. Ifueko Okaro, gives reasons why increasing tax revenues is important. Beyond taxing digitalized multinational businesses, we also have a growing level of local businesses that actually attribute their growth and success to being completely digital. And the question is, how are we taxing this group? Are there lessons to learn from other African countries in terms of more revenue generation? The head of Ethiopian Revenue Agency speaks. In general, tax performance in Africa is quite low, and research can help a great deal in improving tax performance in Africa. I think strengthening these two networks in Africa, one in Nigeria and in Ethiopia, is quite imperative to improve tax performance. Uh, in uh, sub-Saharan African countries. While domestic revenue mobilization remains a top priority for Nigeria and Africa, tax compliance constitutes a major challenge to this drive. Experts are, however, of the opinion that building synergy among tax authorities is key to improving the tax culture of the continent. When the news at 10 returned, Speaker Nancy Pelosi confirms that U.S. House of Representatives will file impeachment charges against President Donald Trump for alleged abuse of power. That and other foreign stories on Around the World in Five.